Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this session about uh, quality, uh, quality assurance for Avalab core products. Uh, my name is Yulin Dong. I'm the uh, manager for the product QA team at Avalabs. <laughs> I've been with the uh, company for more than two years now, and uh, uh, we'll go through the process and uh, uh, lessons we learned for the uh, QA process. As I mentioned, uh, the team uh, is part of the product group this moment, one of the eight teams in the product group. We work together with the, you know, all the team to deliver high quality product. Our current, current focus is on the uh, second uh, layer in this graph. You can see the core properties, basically core extension, core web, and the core mobile. We also uh, recently uh, test a lot of on Glacier APIs, and uh, we also have conversation and discussions with other teams, especially on Ava Cloud and Ava Studio. So um, naturally, the mission of my team, uh, the, uh, the QA team, is to ensure high quality for Avalab, Avalab products through the objectives of uh, four objectives. You know, we establish best practice for test automation and with test plans and their management and uh, make sure that uh, the process is repeatable and uh, have a proper reporting structure for all the test results for all the stakeholders so that we can share uh, with them. Uh, in terms of process, so as a team, we have a ded dedicated team, but each team member have a, a focused area and then they will be work uh, side by side, side, side by side with the dev team. They basically embedded uh, in the uh, dev team. They work, um, you know, in, in terms of agile process. They work from the uh, start, from the planning planning stage to daily uh, uh, stand up and uh, to uh, retro. Um, for actually doing the um, do testing. We do manual test first so that my team member will understand the requirement and the feature. And uh, so that then afterwards, they will uh, start doing uh, uh, automated test to write automated test to, uh, to do as much as possible. Always there's a balance of effort of the outcome and uh, whether we need to do, uh, it's always debatable, you know, 100% uh, uh, test automated test coverage is always debatable. So in terms of technology, so how do we do that? What kind of tools we use? Um, so when my team first started, the first job we're trying to figure out is that uh, what test framework we try to use. So will we be able to use the uh, same test, test framework for all the area we are trying to cover, basically call browser extension, the web, and the mobile. And also uh, a question is that uh, uh, will the technology we choose that the dev team already familiar with? So we have uh, we hired a lot of uh, a, a few of team members. They come from their background writing tests in Java, in Python. So is that the right approach? So after a discussion and uh, uh, research, we decide to write our test case in TypeScript because core application all written in uh, you know, JavaScript, TypeScript, we want our developers also be able to look at the code when they need to look at the code, to, you know, don't need to learn a new language so that they can easily understand the test rather than have to um, guess or learn a new, new, new language. So that's the main reason we, we uh, choose uh, TypeScript. Uh, in terms of uh, tools, so we use uh, just like uh, general uh, industry practice, Cucumber for BDD, and uh, for browser extension and web, we choose uh, WebDriver IO, and uh, for the mobile side, we use the Detox and BitRights. And for API testing, we use the uh, PackDump.js. For execution, and uh, for execution, we use the uh, Solenoid, 
and the test reel and allure for reporting. So those kind of the uh, structure uh, of technology and tools. Um, with our automated testing, we, we basically now in places that uh, will run smoke test on merge, on cold merge. So any of the cold merge into the uh, developer branch or main branch, whatever branch that the development team choose as the, as the uh, development branch. So we, when we uh, will run our smoke test on every merge. And also, we also have um, daily regression, nightly daily regression to run the full regression suite uh, because that usually take, take more time than a smoke test. All those results are reported to Slack and Testrio, so we can check. Actually, uh, just a moment ago, I see uh, there's a failure uh, this morning, so I'm going to uh, <laughs> look at it. You know, so uh, that's always the daily work, our process. So basically, we see result, we we see identify the cause. Either we can fix it, or working with the dev team to fix them. You know, uh, on next day. Uh, besides the uh, feature testing, uh, there's a visual testing. Uh, people might ask, you know, you already have functional testing, why do you visual testing? Because for functional testing, you usually query an uh, uh, object, uh, and then you try to do action, and then compare whether the outcome is the, same, uh, uh, is the same as you expected. But there are cases that uh, the UI may not work as what you expected. So we put in in place of a visual testing. So basically, we evaluate the appearance and behavior of user interface. Basically, compare the element, the color, the images, the fonts, and the layouts. So we're basically doing that. We're generate, generating a, a baseline, and then analyzing and compare the a snapshot to detect if any pixel have changed. We actually found a few bugs by this just by on the uh, different products we, uh, we offer. Um, there's, uh, like, uh, we, uh, there are a few sessions on Glacier API in, in the summit. The Glacier API is the API power up of all our uh, core offerings. And uh, so we also do API testing so that isolates the API from the, the UI. So we, uh, we test uh, uh, Glacier API directly, and uh, um, so that we can, if there's something wrong with this test, we know it's from API layer rather than on the uh, UI implementation, or, or yeah, the, or any of the core offering. Then with uh, everything we just uh, talk, uh, talked, so for the release, we will also do a full regression. So we're going to, we run through all the automated test cases just by click a button. Uh, and then we also run through all the manual cases we identified. Because there's a manual for two reasons. One is that we may not have reached the case to automate the test case. And the second one is that there are test cases we just cannot automate, like uh, we interact with a ledger. Right? You know, with a ledger operation, you need a input from ledger. There's no way to automate those kind of test cases. So we basically have to uh, you know, run through those test, test cases that we identified. We have a spreadsheet for all the scenarios we need to go through. So basically, we track that in, 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 in that spreadsheet every time. Um, then this serve as a gatekeeper for public releases. So we will. Uh, you know, if we do identify a, put a bug, we will go back to the dev team, uh, have a discussion about the, the uh, priority or level of uh, criticality to make sure that, you know, everyone on the same page, is this a blocker for the public release or not? If it's a blocker, the dev team will go back to fix that. We, we test again and so that to make sure that uh, we don't shape product with the uh, high uh, uh, blocker uh, uh, bugs. So uh, as I briefly mentioned, we, we have a test reel for reporting. So basically, we, we have a dashboard we share internally. 
with the, the, the team. If anyone wants to check, they can, you know, we have a, a way to share the test result. Test will basically uh, have uh, graphs to show our test history and the test cases. And then uh, in terms of implementation, WebDriver IO and Detox already have event hooks. You can utilize and hook with the test real APIs so you can send the data directly into uh, a test real. Uh, the, uh, the, the test real itself will show the graph and the, uh, the detail of everything. So with everything I have talked, you know, how do we, what are kind of metrics we put in place actually to measure my team's the productivity and impact? So naturally we, uh, to uh, uh, track uh, the count of automated test cases and with those automated tests, do we have issues actually caught by running those tests? We do. The answer is that we do. We do have cases where, you know, uh, like this morning, we, I mean, we have a failure cases. We need to go back to see whether, what caused the failure. So we need to, to identify the cause. And then we also track uh, how many uh, releases uh, was blocked because the critical bug was found. And the uh, E2E test code coverage for our E2E, how many test code uh, percentage-wise have been covered. We also, uh, naturally, we uh, track bug counts, but the, you know, not the very important uh, one of the matrix. The last but the least one is escaped bug counts. That, this is a very important matrix for my team in, in, in our view. What, are, what is uh, an escaped bug? Is that a bug reported by the end user? So with all the, my team's work, we're trying to ship, naturally, we're trying to ship product with as less per, uh, bugs as possible, right? So that's the main reason we, we have this team. So we do track the, the escaped bug counts. So we released the core last year, right after uh, last summit. So that was in June, uh, so have this. Uh, so this is the chart for showing that uh, how many uh, bugs reported by accident user. Pay attention to the uh, green uh, uh, moving average. So it's a right trend which we like to see is that uh, with time, with the, my team's engagement, we have less uh, excuse a bug reported by accident user. The little bump on the second chart is that because we have uh, new features, new critical feature, important feature we release, that's actually mobile, mobile release on that, in that month. So we have more bugs reported uh, on, really, uh, uh, on mobile. So um, in terms of impacts, um, so we have uh, so far have hundreds of automated test cases and uh, our full regression take much less time. So at the beginning, because we uh, have a lot of uh, manual tests, so full regression take more than a day, actually. Now, we, uh, you know, for example, for browser extension, we take a, a few hours at most a day to get the, uh, it's, uh, it's done. We do have 100% uh, uh, coverage of critical passes. One more thing is that for a lot of uh, QA team, is a stable test. When you have a test failure, is that because your test is flaky or is that your test failed because actually it's caused by bug? So that has been a struggle for my team. We, take a, uh, we spend a lot of time to figure out uh, the cause of those flaky tests to make sure when there are failures, it's really caused by real bugs, not because we run the test different if we run the test again, it gave me a different result. That's a really frustrating experience for any of the QA team. So we are now in a much better stage that our tests are much more stable. So that's, that's, a, you know, <laughs> that's a very good thing for my team. Um, we did run many, many regressions and uh, we had a few uh, releases actually blocked. So that uh, is an overview of my team. So, so feel free to ask any questions. <laughs> Thank you.
Any question? Yeah. What's a, uh, a unique bug you could talk about, maybe? Like a, an example of a unique bug that you ever found that was a little puzzling and kind of funny, maybe? You see, uh, your question, unique bugs? Yeah. So, I mean, so recently, let's see. Um, we, uh, when you talk about unique, bu unique bugs, you know, it's, it's hard to define because a bug could be, um, caused, uh, could be caused by multiple, have, have, for end user, let me step back actually. For end user, when the uh, software didn't expect as, didn't work as what they expected, it could have, have been multiple bugs. You know, it just doesn't work here and there. But when we're trying to uh, uh, create a bug ticket, we need to identify, you know, is that multiple bugs that for this re user reported uh, a different uh, expectation or is that just one bug? I mean, a uh, lot of bugs come initially come from the, uh, the bridge or the swap, the functionality, and then you know, those things have been knocked down. Uh, nowadays, most bugs are, are, are UI glitches, I would say, identify the, uh, that word. So, next one. Hey, Lynn, great job. Um, <laughs> my question was, uh, you mentioned about uh, your team doing the QA on, on the UI experience of the products, and I was uh, curious, what do, you, uh, what do you compare that to, to test the UI of whether it's correct, whether it's the fonts or colors? Um, do you compare that to like the K2 library or, uh, I was just wondering how, how you guys test that. We do have uh, visual testing. So, um, so this vi for visual testing is that we, the first test we go through to establish a baseline. So that baseline, uh, we, we use this, we, software will capture the, uh, the snapshot of initial um, screen uh, snapshot. But that initial sc screenshot will also compare to the design. To, uh, that's, that part is, is manual. You know, compare the initial uh, snapshot, but manually look at the design, did that uh, match? If not match, we can have a discussion to see, you know, is that uh, acceptable? Can that uh, initial snapshot serve as a baseline for future uh, video testing? You know, if not, we definitely need to make sure those can be fixed before we, we uh, serve as the new uh, baseline for video testing. Do those discussions take place with the front end developers or with the UX team? Uh, mostly with the front end because they did the change. They, they did the change. Why did they make the change? They probably have a reason. Right? Then, if needed, we definitely, uh, we have a, a few occasions to talk to the UX team to see, you know, is this acceptable or not acceptable implementation? And then, so make a change or not, so. Hello, thank you for the presentation. You. Um, question, you mentioned at the beginning, manual testing, is it something related to test-driven testing, behavior-driven testing, and so, um, is security also falling, or security testing also falling into your area? Uh, mostly uh, functional testing. Uh, we do have an internal security team to look at the code to do uh, the, the more focus on security. More, my team um, don't have the qualification to do the security part, but we do have a dedicated security team to make sure you know, the security is uh, taken care of. May I ask a follow-up question? Yes. Um, so, supply chain security is a big concern in the industry at the moment, and I have um, some, I tried to find out how Avalanche Labs try to mitigate risks related to supply chain security, because you have uh, most of the code, 80% or 90% of the code is some, written some, from outside of Avalabs, maybe from open source uh, compos compositions and so forth. Um, do you, do, do, um, is it something you pull, uh, uh, you leave the testing purely to the security engineers or is it something, do you use SCA tools or something like that? So that's a hypothetical case because we actually, all the pro core, let me, 
let me say it, I mean, I could be wrong. But all the core products so far, we have written by ourselves. But are you talking about the third party library we could use? For example, third party or second party even. For example, if you have a contractor or something like that, the second party which has contributed to your first, uh, first uh, party code, or third party code which you ca have in just from Node.js libraries or something right. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's so what I'm thinking too while I was trying to <laughs> answer your question. Yes. So um, we do uh, have a security team to do uh, a deep dive and uh, security auditing. We also have been um, uh, uh, have working with our security auditing firm uh, partners to do those things too. Mm. Not it's not part of my team's responsibility. Mm. So maybe if, if, Go if I may uh, follow up question: Is your testing purely concentrated on the code itself, or is it even before so the design testing and so forth? Is we, also so at this moment, we are more focused on the. Uh, the, the functional. Function, so yes. code, okay. Yes. Mm, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? For, uh, you, you talked about automated testing and you talked about code coverage a little bit. I'm wondering if you have any tips for getting an engineering team which creates automated tests, um, but right now they might be focused too much on kind of happy path test cases to make sure they try all the different edge cases and, and how, to, how to, to be able to get them to kind of up level their, their testing game. Um, I, okay, so you, you, it's, it's implied same that uh, you don't have a QA team by itself? Or yeah, there's not, a, just a, not a, a separate QA take team. Care of the QA, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's... I, Yeah, I, I mean, definitely depend on your timeline, your pressure to, uh, to market it to, right? Yep. So either are you, if, if you only have uh, um, dedicated, you don't have, if you don't have dedicated QA team, you only have developers, they are, also, they are writing their uh, feature and developing feature, they are also add-on for testing. Yeah, I can see that. So that's why we have a, a separate team, you know, yep. definitely measuring different things and uh, focus on different things so we can <laughs> cover yeah. the, just not only the, the happy path. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? No? Okay, thank you. Appreciate your time. <laughs>